the San Diego Musculoskeletal Project. Today I'm going to discuss how to perform a ganglion cyst aspiration. Let's start with the incidence. Ganglion cysts are the most common benign soft tissue tumors of the hand and wrist. They occur more commonly in women, a 3 to 1 ratio with men. Ganglion cysts usually occur in the second to fourth decades of life. The thick mucin filled cysts may arise from trauma or repetitive irritation. What are the indications for aspirating ganglion cysts? Most ganglion cysts will resolve spontaneously. Aspiration and corticosteroid injection can be considered for ganglion cysts if patients complain of pain, decreased range of motion, paresthesias, or for aesthetic considerations. This procedure is not very effective with a recurrence rate of 30 to 83 percent reported in the literature. This is probably due to the fact that after aspirating the contents of the cyst, the cyst wall and direct communication with the underlying joint or tendon remains. We will now review the anatomy. Ganglion cysts typically arise from an underlying tendon or joint. The most common location for a ganglion cyst is from the scapholunate joint, which occurs 60 to 70 percent of the time. 20 to 25 percent of cysts arise from the volar aspect of the wrist and 10 to 12 percent from the flexor tendon sheath of the finger. One should avoid aspirating a volar radial wrist cyst due to the proximity to the radial artery, which in fact may be displaced by the ganglion or even winding through a multiseptated ganglion. In addition, a volar radial wrist mass could actually be a radial artery aneurysm and not a ganglion. This is a diagram showing a large ganglion cyst arising from the scapholunate joint in the dorsal wrist. To aspirate a ganglion cyst, you will need the standard injection supplies. This includes alcohol swabs and betadine or chlorhexidine to disinfect the skin. Even though you typically don't aspirate much fluid from a cyst, it helps to have a somewhat larger syringe that has the ability to create more negative pressure when the plunger is pulled back so that it can help to suck out the very thick fluid. For this reason, you should use a 5 or 10 cc syringe for the aspiration and an 18 gauge needle. Early studies of injecting steroid after aspiration showed good success, but these have not been reproducible. Currently, the thought is that since the ganglion cysts are not inflammatory in origin, the success with steroid injection may be no better than aspiration alone. If you plan on injecting steroid after aspiration, you will need a 3 milliliter syringe and should draw up 1 half milliliter of 40 milligrams per milliliter Kenalog, or its equivalent, with one half milliliter of 1% lidocaine. Other supplies include ethyl chloride to anesthetize the skin and a gauze and a band-aid to stop the bleeding after removing the needle. In this picture you can see a large dorsal wrist ganglion cyst. The cyst has been marked with a pen so you can see the outline. An alcohol swab and chlorhexidine are used to clean the skin. You should allow the skin to completely dry before proceeding with the procedure. To aspirate the cyst, spray ethyl chloride on the skin overlying the cyst until the skin turns white. Insert the 18 gauge needle quickly through the skin and into the center or belly of the cyst. Aspirate the thick jelly-like fluid. Oftentimes, if the cyst is chronic and there are septations, you may need to pass through the cyst wall various times in order to get fluid from several compartments. In addition, multiple puncture holes through the cyst wall is thought to help keep the cyst from recurring. After aspirating, you can stabilize the needle by holding the hub and twist off the syringe and replace it with the pre-drawn steroid lidocaine mixture. Make sure to shake the steroid in the syringe before doing this so the steroid which has precipitated out of the solution can be mixed back in. 
Remove the needle and apply pressure with the gauze until the bleeding has stopped. Then apply a Band-Aid. The aspirated fluid is extremely thick and jelly-like. After aspiration, apply a pressure dressing or after ample pressure, a Band-Aid. Instruct the patient to return to your office if they develop redness, swelling, or increased pain at the injection site. Ganglion cyst recurrence is common and may indicate the need for surgical excision if symptoms are severe. Evidence from the literature suggests that about 40% of lesions decrease over the first six years after evaluation by a hand surgeon that most ganglion cysts recur after aspiration and that surgical intervention has about a 10% recurrence rate, leaves scars, and has some risks for adverse events. The ICD-9 and CPT codes that you would need to document the procedure for the visit encounter are listed. This is a summary slide reviewing the needed supplies for a ganglion cyst aspiration. This is a summary slide describing the technique for aspirating a ganglion cyst. We hope you've enjoyed this presentation on ganglion cyst aspiration.